The Kia Sorento. Mark and I have already covered this vehicle once in the past, but that was a launch video. It's now 2022, and for this model year, the Sorento has received some changes. But more importantly, in this video, we're going to spend more time with this vehicle to do a better job explaining what this thing's actually like to live with day in and day out and give you some real world impressions. So let's talk about the interior space first. The Sorento is Kia's entry level three row SUV. This is not the biggest vehicle on the planet, but Kia is trying to do a lot with a relatively mid sized or smaller package. And one of the main reasons you're going to buy this thing over its competitors is its cargo capacity. So with the third row folded down and the second row folded down, basically when you maximize your cargo capacity, you're looking at 75 total cubic feet. With the third row down, you're looking at 45, which is honestly really, really impressive. That said, with the third row up, you basically entirely eliminate its trunk. So that's something to keep in mind. That's not a problem when you're having something like a Palisade or some of its competing three row SUV counterparts. In this vehicle's configuration, it has captain's chairs for the second row, which basically feel like they're lifted right out of a minivan, which is not a bad thing. They're fairly comfortable, they have good configurability, and they fit a wide variety of body types. That said, the third row is a bit limiting. If you are a full-size adult, you're probably not going to want to spend a lot of time back there. The one thing I will say for the rear passengers, and this, this theme also carries over to the front passengers, Kia doesn't do the best job with door cubbies and really just interior cargo capacity for larger items compared to some of his competitors, so that's something to keep in mind. The front seats in this car are very comfortable. This is a fully loaded model, which comes in about $45,000, so the front seats are leather, they're heated and cooled, and they have a wide range of configurability. So if you want to sit up nice and high, have a good command of the road, you can do that. But you can also get these seats nice and low, which is actually kind of surprising. Moving on to the visibility front, Kia is doing a pretty good job. There's a lot of glass in this vehicle, and with the moonroof open, when you fully have this thing maxed out when it comes to visibility, it has a very airy feeling cabin, which feels great. When it comes to the rest of the interior materials, Kia's done a relatively good job hiding some of the economy car like roots of this vehicle. So yes, there's still some really hard plastics on the doors and the dash, and there's way too much piano black everywhere in this car. But you do have some interesting leather work. I love the brown and the blacks. I like the contrast stitching. This car doesn't feel like a complete shitbox, which is a good thing. Moving on to the way you use this vehicle, it's fairly organic, which is something I really, really like. You have physical controls for HVAC, infotainment, your drive modes are physical, and it takes you about two seconds of sitting in this car to figure out where everything is. The Bose audio system, at least at this price point, is pretty decent, and the infotainment and the safety suite in typical Kia fashion works very, very well. The one thing I will say, and this kind of carries over to the piano black statement I made earlier, is the fact that your HVAC controls and all your infotainment are covered in piano black is a bad thing. If you're going to put kids in this car, or you're going to be using all of these switch gears a lot, it's going to look like crap very, very quickly. I think it's time for us to put this thing up on the lift so I can briefly walk you through what the Sorento is mechanically. Underneath the 2022 Kia Sorento for this model year, they've made two changes. The first being they've offered an all-new drivetrain. It is a plug-in hybrid, and sadly, we do not have it for this video. Check back in in about 40 years when we get one as a press car. The other thing is they changed the Kia badges. They are now more sporty and more youthful. So those are your two changes for this model year. When it comes to the rest of this car, if you haven't watched our original Sorento video, this is built on the Kia Hyundai N3 platform, which is their modular platform, which they can stretch to become something like a Kia Carnival, but they can also shrink to make something like a Santa Cruz or a regular Tucson or some of their smaller or mid-sized CUVs. What about the car? Well, it's strut front, multi-link rear with an on-demand all-wheel drive system. You can get the variety of different engine configurations in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. In this car's case, because it is the 2.5 liter turbocharged DD GDI engine paired to a wet dual clutch, I highly recommend you get the all-wheel drive system. We drove this car in front-wheel drive, guys, and it's a mess. It's not because it's not good off-road or in the snow or any of that. It's just because this car can't put down all of its torque, particularly with a open front differential in regular front wheel drive guys. The other two drivetrains worth taking a look at is the based 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. It's probably gonna be far more fuel efficient and maybe give you less trouble over the long run. And the hybrid 1.6 liter, that engine is worth looking at alone due to the fact that it's rather fuel efficient. For that, I think it's time for us to quickly take this thing out on the road and give you my driving impressions. Mm -hmm. 
setting off in the Kia Sorento. This baby in a sport. Turn off some traction and stability control. Ah, oh, there we go. So what do I think about this car? Well, I've spent a decent amount of time with it, and one of the things I'm struck by is the powertrain. As we mentioned in our original video, if you're going to go with the high output four cylinder, you absolutely need all wheel drive. This car will turn into a one wheel peel machine in front wheel drive variant. And if you leave traction and stability control in or on, uh, Kia doesn't do the best job with their system. They basically just drop a boat anchor out the back. But with the all wheel drive, this car puts most of its power down pretty well. And in the corners, while no, this is not the best handling vehicle in its segment, I think, honestly, Mazda and even VW does a better job with the organic feel of the front and rear. This is plenty capable. And if you are just gonna be putting around in this, once you turn the systems back on, it does a pretty good job. Well, again, no, this is not the most fun vehicle to drive. And yes, if you leave the systems on and you are pushing it, the car basically freaks out and shuts down the vehicle. What you can do instead is just use this as a total cruiser. The car itself is pretty quiet, despite having a lot of glass. Given its price point, it's not fatiguing for long periods of time. It's relatively soft. No, it's not the softest vehicle I've ever been in, but it does a good job masking a lot of the road imperfections and the big hits. And for a vehicle like this, particularly something you're gonna put a lot of kids in and honestly probably be distracted in a lot by your rear passengers, the safety features, the lane keep assist, the adaptive cruise control, the, the alerts, like when someone pulls away from you or your, your upcoming collision alerts, for the most part, work pretty well. And again, if you need to merge or you need to accelerate onto a back road, there is plenty of passing power with this four cylinder. The one thing I will say about the four cylinder is it's pretty thirsty. Given my driving environment, which is mixed between highway and county roads, I'm returning in the mid 20s, which compared to some of its competitors, may dissuade you given how much gas costs currently. The, the, the other thing I will bring up about this vehicle is when you're going over some bumps, and if you are a rear passenger in this car, something it does that is reminiscent of many minivans, and I think just due to the sheer volume of the interior of this car, is you can feel some flex, which is a little bit disappointing, but not to be unexpected, I guess. Removing that, removing some of the at-limit handling complaints, because again, this is a CUV, this is something you were buying to put your family in, it does its core functions well. It's comfortable, the safety features work well, it bundles in a lot of features for, to be honest, not a lot of money, and it's a car you definitely should be taking a look at at this price point. So with that, let's head into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Kia Sorento. So what does Kia do with this thing? Well, they give you a lot of space, three rows, and they cover a giant spread in price. You can get this thing for relatively cheap or all the way up to in the mid to high 40s, like this car is. This thing's about $45,000. And at $45,000, Kia gives you actually quite a bit for your money. The four cylinder is very powerful, the transmission works great, and the interior electronics are excellent. Not to mention the fact that they've done a pretty good job distancing the interior from some of the cheaper trim levels with the pretty good leather and interesting design. What are the negatives? Well, it's not the most entertaining thing to drive. To be honest, it doesn't feel all that great being pushed. The stability and traction control is very invasive and when it's off, the front and the rear don't talk to one another. And when you compare the dynamics to something like Yamaha CX-5, CX-50, or VW Tiguan, those cars do it better. So why would you buy one of these things? It's quiet, it's comfortable, assuming you find a good dealer, the warranty is pretty decent, and for the most part, I think this is a very, very competitive car given its segment, and it's worth taking a look at. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.